everyone, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we will be reflecting on the dynamic systems theory and how its concepts influence each other to enable the emergence of behaviour and movement. The dynamic systems theory consists of three interrelated constraints which enables motor control and skill acquisition. These constraints identify as the individual environment and task. When an individual is learning a skill and performing it, they are taking into consideration the three constraints which can be perceived as boundaries. An individual's biomechanical system will respond to these constraints while self-organising their body to action a movement. Let's have a look at this in a practical sense. This individual here is attempting to develop the skill of a forward somersault. The facilitator has taken into consideration that the athlete is a novice in gymnastics and has experienced a knee reconstruction. Therefore, his timeline of development will differ significantly from someone else's. To accommodate towards his individual constraints and still ensure his practice time is effective, the facilitator has modified the task and the environment to create a more inclusive learning environment where the individual safety is not compromised. The task for the individual is to roll down a couch onto numerous pillows which replicates a wedge. This is a stepping stone for the individual as he will progress to being able to perform a somersault in the future. Now with the individual rolling sideways, he is understanding the concept of utilising his body's biomechanics of degrees of freedom to self-organise the body to form a tight figure. The performer has done this on his own terms as he came to understand that creating a tight figure and allowing gravity to interplay will enable him to rotate around his axes and reach the attractor which is at the bottom of the setup. The physical environment provides the performer with space and stillness which can enable him to perform the skill. Given the environment filled with cushioning, the individual may perceive this as an opportunity for action to occur. It indeed creates an affordance for the individual as he may feel invited to engage with the skill. This one manipulated task has enabled the individual to understand and rehearse the properties of a somersault. By the facilitator creating an affordance like so, the individual will be more inclined to engage with the skill and therefore achieve skill acquisition. Now let's compare this to another learner. This individual is at an advanced level when performing a forward somersault. Her individual constraints differ significantly from the previous video as she appears to have the bodily functions to perform the skill and has essentially mastered the skill of a forward somersault. Given these individual constraints, the facilitator has manipulated the task and environment to encourage a new movement pattern to emerge. This follows the constraints-led approach model. The individual here is transferring her weight into her arms by holding a handstand and then self-organising her body to form a tight round-like figure to come out of the skill. Given her expertise, the body has decreased the amount of degrees of freedom involved. The environmental constraint visible is the space that the individual has to perform the skill in. We can easily see that there are objects around her which can hinder and enable her performance depending on her perception at the time. Gravity is also present as she is holding a handstand and slowly pulling herself towards the ground. Gravity can be perceived as an unstable force in this condition. However, once the individual lands on the ground after coming out of the somersault, she has reached an attractor. Within this video, the affordance can be recognised as the individual having confidence within herself to perform the skill, thus enabling her to action the movement in a confined space. The individual's prior engagement with somersaulting and pairing it with other skills has exposed the individual to various constraint combinations, thus generating multiple successful and unsuccessful behaviour and movement patterns to emerge. This video suggests to facilitators that individuals will experience different timelines of progress depending on their constraints. It is imperative to note that individuals should be catered towards in a way that enables them to develop the skill. Therefore, we should all stray away from the traditional and ineffective model of a one-size-fits-all approach to skill development.